Today we're going to teach you how to make gelatin cuts, wounds, bullet holes, burns, all with just standard products you can buy at a regular grocery store. This is Knox Gelatin Unflavored. They come in these little packets. You'll need maybe about five packets. That's a roughly about a quarter cup right here. Um, sorbitol and gelatin both can be found in pharmacies or in the pharmacy area of any grocery store pretty much. Uh, glass bowl or a cup, this is just a regular mason jar and a compact of uh, a color that you would like. I crush this down so that I can use it. You might want to find what skin tone works best for your actors. You're only going to use a little bit. You're not going to really color it that much. We may not even need a scale today because we're just going to do uh, this basic mixing way. All right, and now let's get started. First of all, you're going to need a third cup of glycerin and a third cup of sorbitol, and you're going to mix it into this bowl here. So a third cup, glycerin. You can mix it up if you wanted a higher amount, but for right now, this is great for us. And also a third cup of sorbitol. No water at all. Water will evaporate over time and your cuts and gashes won't look as well. And this will keep it from, you know, melting in the heat. It'll still melt. You just have to be careful. But you got both of those together. You're going to heat this up in a microwave. You're going to heat up in intervals of like 30 seconds at a time. Stir it with a popsicle stick. And just till it gets nice and hot, not boiling hot, just nice and hot. Then we're slowly going to add the gelatin. Stir between each 30 seconds just to mix it up and make sure the heat is distributed. I've done two, I'll do one more 30 second and then I'll start adding some of the gelatin and see how it goes. Now that our glycerin and sorbitol is nice and hot, we're going to slowly add the gelatin to it. Slowly put it a little bit in and then stir it. Get it to dissolve. And it will get lumpy, but as you stir and you heat it up some more, it will dissolve in really nice. Keep going. This is very hot. You do not want to get it on your fingers. It will cause burns. Now all that dissolved in, so I am actually going to add more. Now I'm adding my color. And also, I'm going to add flocking. Flocking can be bought at craft stores. You can get flesh colored flocking, red flocking. Red actually gives it that lifelike look, that translucency of, of um, pinkness that your skin has. So I'm adding flocking to it. And then I'm going to let that sit in my refrigerator overnight so that it will solidify and all of the colors will blend. Um, Knox Gelatin like I said, is a consumer grade gelatin. Gelatin is measured in density of its bloom, which means the higher the bloom number, the denser it is. Uh, prosthetic grade gelatin is about 300 bloom. Knox gelatin is 150 bloom. So it's not as strong, but it doesn't mean we can't use it for this purpose. It's just not as durable. And if you're doing large prosthetics, no, you wouldn't use it for that. But for small um, little cuts and stuff, you can still use it. Okay, I put it in the microwave one more time. It's nice and hot. You can see it's a nice consistency, nice and creamy. Um, this now I'll put in my fridge overnight. Let it sit. It will solidify solid. It'll be nice rubbery hard texture to it. Then we'll use it for our gelatin effects. I picked up these welder's gloves to use for the gelatin because gelatin is so hot and this covers my wrist up to my forearm so these are pretty nice gloves. So before we begin pouring anything into a mold you want to make sure you have a mold release. So we're using Vaseline. I'm just rubbing it really well into every nick and cranny 
and that includes your other surfaces outside of your prosthetic. You want to make sure that wherever you are going to be putting gelatin that you have mold release on it. If you don't, you're not going to get it off. Especially if you're doing a two-part mold, it will be locked. You will not get your mold apart unless you break it apart. Um, with gelatin, you can submerge it in water and try and loosen up the gelatin. You can do that, or you can even heat your mold up in the oven. Just be careful when you heat your mold up, when you bring it out into room temperature, it could crack. So you want to be careful of that too. So right now, I am just coating every area I can, even the sides a little bit. I just want to make sure that I've got a really good coating of my mold release on this entire mold before I pour. One thing I found when you're working with plaster and gelatin is that if you heat your mold up a little bit, you'll find that the gelatin will settle in better than a cold mold. If your mold is cold and you lay hot gelatin over it, you're going to get air pockets because the gelatin is going to start, you know, cooling off immediately when it touches your mold. So use a blow dryer or a heat gun and just heat up your mold till it's kind of warm and then your gelatin will actually flow in better, especially when you have deep molds like if you're doing a prosthetic or something. My mold's warm. I'm just spreading out the Vaseline a little bit better just because I can see that the Vaseline was kind of drying from the heat gun. But that's okay. That's what you want to do is re-Vaseline it if you feel Okay, now let's coat it with gelatin. See, I have a little hair from my... Had a little hair in there from my brush. So make sure you get it all over really well. You want to put a little extra. Remember, what you don't use, you just pour back in this thing and reuse it. Now, I'm going to take my putty knife and just make sure that I coat it really well. And then once it's coated, go ahead and push down kind of hard. And... Now I'll let this cool for a bit and then I'll peel this all off here and put it back in my container and then I'll take this, put this in the, the freezer that I have, my, just my regular home freezer and I'll let this cool really well before I peel it out. And you can see the nice plaster white showing which means we got some good feathered edges there. Alright, they're pretty dry. I'm going to start peeling this up and trimming it away because I don't want to lose my feathered edge, so I'm just being very gentle. And this, just putting back in here, because that's reusable. Now this mold, I'm going to go take it, I actually can, uh, I want to freeze it so it's really stiff and then I'll pull it out, because I just want to preserve these edges Remember, this is not prosthetic grade gelatin I use. This is homemade stuff from Knox Gelatin, so it's not a real high-end gelatin. But I just want to show you that you can get product out of it. So we're going to put this in our freezer, get it nice and cold, powder it, and then peel it out. All right, let's go ahead and powder. And we're going to try and keep this intact. I want to keep the feathered edge and even this little lip here that I made, this little red ridge. So I'm going to try and pull it out. Like I say, this is consumer grade gelatin. So it's not as durable as the prosthetic grade. This is the tedious process. Trying to dig it out slowly and keep it intact. And if you use a good amount of mold release, you should be pretty safe. It's coming up nice and slow. It's good to powder underneath too as you go. It's good to powder underneath as you go also. 
There's a nice piece right there. That bullet hole looks gorgeous. I'm using this uh, rim that I made, this edge here, to peel it up and it seems like it's working pretty well. And you see I'm using toothpicks because I don't want to damage my mold with any kind of metal. Just slow and patient. So two came out with the flashing which is awesome and the other two I just got to be very gentle and slowly dig them out and try and keep my flashing very minimal. But as you can see it does work and you can make gelatin effects with consumer grade gelatin. There is a bullet hole with nice flashing and it'll be easy to blend. And the cut looks really nice too. And that cut looks really nice too with nice flashing edges. This is what I'm going to apply on my actress so you know how to apply a gelatin prosthetic. Good looking bullet hole. Nice feathered edges. Throw some powder on that so those edges don't fold up. Okay, we're going to apply this cut to the side of this arm here. This is our gelatin effects cut we just made. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add glue to the back of this and then I'm going to add glue to her arm because the prosthetic adhesive is a contact cement. So you need to apply it to both. They dry and then you stick them together. So we're going to do that right now. So we flip this over and we add prosthetic adhesive to it. You want to try and avoid the fine feathered edges because they will flip up and stick. Now we're going to add Prosade to the arm. This has already been cleaned, alcohol, so we don't have to worry about it coming off. And let that dry. Now that they're dry, we're going to apply them to the arm. What you want to do is you want to add it in the center and then push it away. Push it away just like that. And now the edges need to be pushed down into the skin. And now we're going to use a new product called Witch Hazel to blend the edges. Witch Hazel is an astringent. It's made for kind of minor insect bites, cuts and stuff. I bought it at Rite Aid, so it can be bought at pretty much any um, pharmacy. Um, it's actually used to blend the edges. Now that we have our edges blend down, now we're going to powder and then we'll start adding some makeup. Now we're going to powder it with translucent powder, which will take the shine off and keep it from being sticky. We are going to use Skin Illustrator to paint the wound. These are alcohol active makeups. They use 99% or more. Um, alcohol. You cannot use anything like 70%. It just doesn't work very well. This was bought at a pharmacy. Um, if you can't find that pharmacy, you'll have to pr uh, purchase it online because it says not less than 99%.
So that's the kind of um, alcohol that we use to activate this makeup. The two that I mainly use is my effects, Illustrator Effects and Skin Illustrator, the original one. This is skin tones. This is all effects colors, bruises, cuts, and everything. So this is, these are the two main ones that I would recommend getting. They are expensive, but they go a long ways. You don't have to worry about running out very fast. They, go, they last a long time. So I would recommend using these on anything like silicone or um, gelatin. So to apply makeup to this, we're going to use a splatter technique. I got this chip brush, it, and I cut it down so that I can actually splatter. I'm just going to take my finger and just go like this over it and it's going to actually add color to it and start blending it into her skin more natural looking. If you paint, then it just looks like a streak of paint. This here will take it and bring it more into her skin. And then after this color, I will use a darker color and maybe an extra color after that. And now I'm going to a different color that I added some alcohol to to activate it. And then I'm going to add a little bit more on that. See those are just adds a little bit more color to it because skin has more than one color. Just like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to now fill in that cut. So we're going to take our brush. I just loaded it with some alcohol. I'm going to run it in here and fill this brush with red makeup so that I can actually now paint the inside of this cut. And if like you notice I overflowed a little bit, but if you add alcohol to your brush, you can actually wipe that away, just like that. Now we're going to add some bruising. So we take our bruise blue and make it kind of into a wash. And we're just going to put it around the edges a little bit. Just like that. Okay, now we're going to add some stage blood to the inside. And a lot of people like to um, once you add blood, what you want to do is you want to take your finger and kind of smear it around a little bit. That's what makes it look more graphic. Just like that. That will be how tall your bullet hole will be. The first video in our prosthetic transfer series will teach you the basics of sculpting bullet holes, wounds, and scars. If you want it a little more dramatic, I'm going to take my clay now. I'm going to start making walls around my sculptures. Now we're going to cast this in plaster. In our second video on prosthetic transfers, we will explain to you how to create latex prosthetics and apply them to your actors. And remember, you don't have to worry about inside the hole because that's going to be red. So you want to really just make